Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Nova Eaters. Yes, we're eating Novas today. Oh, the worst, I mean, best jokes ever, obviously. Now, if you're looking for amazing deals on games, you can check out the link in the description to g2a.com, and they have weekly sales quite often. So, anyway, here we are. We are going to be fighting Yap. Bo Catapan. Yes, I said something that was Aztecian. Yes, that's mm, that's that's exactly it. Aztecian, right? That's that's accurate. Anyway, ah <laughs> uh, yes, oh yes, I can I can see it now. Anyway, we're going to be attacking him. This is the fellow that was helping out the other guy beforehand, and this is great because now. He only has 22. Oh yes, he only has 22. Now, I do have a couple of camel archers. Only a few, not too many. And I did make a brief stopover in Rodok territory because one of you let me know about an amazing weapon that I am now using, which is a rapier. It's absolutely, abso absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yes, it is absolutely amazing. It's actually really good. And it's one-handed. And it only has a strength requirement of 8. And it has 48 piercing damage and I think 42 cutting damage. So it is going to be insanely good against the Aztecs, I hope. So yeah, let's just let's just see here. I don't have any horse archery, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get off my... my I was going to say mouse, but <laughs> then it was just like, yes, mount and horse together. Yes, that's mouse. So I'm going to get off my mouse real quick, and I'm going to shoot this guy in the face, hopefully. Am I? I'm, I am shooting a couple of them, but some of them have shields, so it's kind of a bit of a shame, but yeah, it doesn't really matter too much, does it? Okay, so yeah, there we go. I'm going to try and improve our archery skill a little bit here as well. It's always good to get some higher archery proficiency. And whoa, okay, we have some Serenade archers as well, and we have some... Well, I think we have some javelin javelineers or whatever they are called, but uh, apparently our Saranid archers are just absolutely beasting on the enemies right here. And it's actually kind of surprising because I thought to myself, okay, we need to get mostly infantry, but then I forgot to get archers. And archers, as we all know from previous series, are very important indeed, because if you don't have archers, then you have no reach whatsoever and you're just going to end up dying very easily but as you can see we're weakening them significantly I don't even need to actually do this but I, I thought I would just test out the Serenid archers and see how well they actually well do because it would be kind of nice to see their their performance I'm gonna try and stab someone in the back yep no ah I was trying to but it didn't really work whoa the speed of this rapier is amazing okay so this cost me 4,400 florins, which is actually pretty expensive, but for such an amazing weapon, I think it's worth it. I think it is worth it. So there we go. We only lost one Saranid Archer and everyone else was killed. I am... Uh, yeah, okay, I'm actually going to take this guy prisoner, but that is going to make the Aztecs probably pretty mad, so they're probably going to go after us pretty harshly. Maybe. We're going to see anyway. But yes, yeah, so let's just take the rest of the loot that we have there. Okay, so as you can see, we have now arrived. And where are we going to go to next? I think we're actually going to go to this town first. Because that is the closest one to Diggory. And now let's just hope that there aren't any other vassals around here that are significant in number. Because if there are, then we are going to be in a very bad spot. Oh, hello there. 126. They have warrior priests as well as many temple guards. So let's level these guys up a little bit more. Another Huskarl to join the ranks. And yes, as you see also, our weekly cost has skyrocketed up to 1900 almost. Which is pretty, pretty bad. Because I don't have that much anymore, considering I have this. It is a balanced rapier. 41 cutting damage, 48 thrusting damage, pretty nice. And the weapon reach and the speed is pretty good too. So I'm very happy overall with that. Wow. Okay, so, yes, I think we're going to do battle with this fellow. Oh, there's two of them. Of course there is. There is two of them. Ah, well, what can you do? What can you do? Sometimes you just have to roll with it, and that guy appeared out of the garrison right at the last second, which, of course, 
is what they do. The Aztecs do seem to have numbers on their side, and that's basically it. They only have numbers. They don't seem to have very good units. They do have good units in the form of the Temple Guards, of course, and the Warrior Priests are probably going to be extremely deadly, but I haven't really fought many of those just yet. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try and shoot a couple of them. Maybe we can, their shields, maybe do a little bit of fleeting damage. It's not going to be anything that's going to actually make any difference in whether we win or lose, but... Yeah, you never know. It's, it might be one of those times, and, and indeed one of those episodes, where we face the Aztecs and they just swamp us with numbers and then they're able to just completely overwhelm us and we, we lose the fight. But we are actually weakening them. We are actually weakening them. So this could be like a war of attrition type thing and, you know, that's perfectly fine. I don't mind doing that because usually in the end... We prevail, because obviously we do have a rather large garrison of people waiting for us at Diggory, and we actually eliminated the leader himself. The leader was just standing out here by himself, doing not much, which was actually kind of amusing to see. And maybe I should have stayed on my horse. Might have been a good idea to stay on my horse, actually, but I don't really want to charge in. I just want to let my archers bombard them as much as we can. Obviously, we do have some mounted archers as well in the form of the camel archers, but yeah, I'm not particularly happy about their performance so far. They don't seem to really be killing too much, and I'm not entirely sure. Where are our other archers? Do I only have one in here? I only have one archer in here, and I have 49 infantry. I'm actually unsure why that is. Okay, apparently I'm going to have to use some sort of weird tactic now, and I'm Going to have to uh, get on my mount again. I really would like to have a different mount, but as it stands, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. So I'm going to just charge straight on in here. I'm going to see what I can do about disrupting the archers yet again. Shields up, because if we, if we don't, I'm going to die very, very quickly. So these guys are just going to get a bit distracted by me, and hopefully that will result in us having the upper hand, I suppose. Oh no, I'm going to lose my amount very, very quickly indeed, because these guys have javelins and they're very accurate with them. So, let's try and just distract the archers a little bit more. Come on, eliminate that guy, or at least try and do as much damage as possible to him. Oh yes, warrior priest. Okay, so there we go. Now, I'm going to have to help with the main sort of area here, the main force of enemies, because if I don't, I'm probably sure that we're going to lose. Maybe. Okay, there we go. Yes, I'm using the speed. The speed of our sword to eliminate all of them. Yes. Okay, there we go. Let's fight. Let us fight amongst them. How dare you. Wow, that was that was a little bit disruptive, wasn't it? Okay, well, we're fine, we're fine. There's a nice thrust. Ah, uh, yes. I'm not used to this thrusting animation, I have to say. I do like the thrusting animation, that is for sure. But, unfortunately, the... Yeah, getting used to it is a little bit difficult. So, let's see what we can do. Maybe I can actually thrust at that guy. Yeah, oh, there we go. It's a little bit of a shallow thrust, isn't it? It's not as deep as we usually like to thrust, but, well, that's just how it has to be right now. That guy is actually running, which is pretty good to see. And I'm kind of... I, am, I, am I worried? I'm not entirely sure. I think I am. I am quite worried. Yep, there we go. We are down. A Jaguar warrior. Uh, okay, so that might be it yet again. Yes, we've lost already 50... Wait, wait. Actually, more than that. 60 or so units already. And there's only 10 of them remaining. But we did get outnumbered pretty heavily there. So I guess we're just going to be retreating once more. But as you can see, our morale we're gaining is just insane. But yeah, yet again, we, we lost another 10 of those guys. But the thing with this is that we're weakening their greatest armies where we need to be. So I'm pretty happy with that. I am actually pretty happy with that. As you can see, that guy only has 12 remaining. This guy only has 81. And we are severely outnumbered every single time. And we're gaining Huskars, which is exactly what we need to be gaining. You know, we need to be gaining those Huskars, because those Huskars are going to be the main reason why we probably will win the siege in the end. So I'm going to be dismounting. Well, dismounting? No. Disembarking, thank you very much. And we're going to be heading back to our colony. Now, what I do need to do is get a couple more pieces of timber because I need to... Well, actually, I could get some more colonists. I think I'll go and get some more colonists. Let's land here, thank you. And, yeah, as you can see, we have 55 out of 65. So I think it's probably a good idea to go and do that 
And as you see also our timber, oh, we actually do have some pretty good timber. We have 12 timber because it, when I went in here beforehand, before I actually made my way over to Aztec lands, oh, it's very dark, isn't it? It's very dark. Yeah, before I did that, we didn't have much timber, but now we do. So I'm going to be building a house and I think I'll probably just build it around here or something. I think that's I think that's fine. I think that's okay. There we go. So that's nice. So now we have 75. Now, one of you also told me very helpfully that once we get the population to 100, that is when the colony of Diggory will be attempting, or at least starting, to produce dye. Dyes, or whatever. So that's, that's pretty nice. That is pretty nice, because as far as I'm aware, dyes are pretty good to sell. I know tobacco apparently is the best. But I don't think I have one of those. Or do I? I'm not entirely sure. Oh yes, also one of you mentioned that it might be a good idea to buy more galleons to gain more unit size. Well, the, the main problem with that is that my renown does not allow me to get more than 80. So we have 80 capacity on the waves, and we're not able to get any more than that. So... That's the main reason why I don't have more ships, which is kind of sad, I guess. So let's have a look here. Island of Beartild. Ah, okay, so this is Ivory, and this has a population of 20. Well, technically it has a capacity of 20 because I have built a couple of things because it actually has a bunch of tools and stone and timber, of course, because we are importing some materials here as well. So we're setting things up pretty nicely. Oh, my ship is not at the harbor, apparently. So we're going to have to go back here manually. There we go. Okay, so we're going to head back to Zendar. I'm going to try and get some colonists. Now, what's amusing about these colonists is that they're... <laughs> well, I'll show you. I, I will actually show you because they have some rather amusing dialogue. And you're going to see that in just a second. So let's land here and go into Zendar. Let's take a walk around the streets. And let's go to the suburbs. As you can see, this scene takes a lot of your computer. I don't believe we've actually seen the streets of a town just yet, but as you see, this is an absolutely amazing vista here. I don't even know. This must have taken a long, long time. But anyway, let's speak to one of the townsmen. Hello. I have a colony in the New World. Are you interested in populating it? A colony? Well, that's quite interesting. Life's short and dangerous here. People say the New World offers new opportunities. So you are interested? Not only me, I know nine other people who are willing to sail over, but we cannot leave this place immediately. We have a life here. So then, <laughs> this is the amusing part. Well, what if 250 florins fell into your pocket? Do you think it's easier then? Yeah, okay, so they have a life here, so I would assume that they have a house or a, an abode or some kind of structure that they live in. So if we give them 250 florins, which I'm pretty sure is literally nothing in this day and age, then they're just magically going to say yes? Of course, thank you so much. We're ready to sail off, which is kind of amusing. I don't know. I think it's fine because we are obviously going to be building new houses for them and they don't have to pay any rent or anything like that as far as I'm aware, so I suppose that's okay. So let's set sail. As you see, they're going to be following us and I'm apparently walking across water now because that's just that's just what I do. And yeah, so we have 10 colonists and that is going to be for Diggory. I'm going to have to do this a little bit more, of course. My party has nothing to eat. Uh, of course, of course. Not used to having an army. I'm used to running around with three people, two companions and myself. So that's the main reason why we don't have any food, of course. And obviously because I donate it to our colonies and things. But as it stands, uh, yeah, this is basically what I do off screen. I just run from the colony to Zendar, the colony to Zendar, and just get more population. And hopefully by that time, there's a little more timber and stone and various other things from us importing it. And if not, then I will just run around the various towns and buy the timber and the stone and things like that. Obviously, we don't have a lot of money right now, so I'm going to have to wait for next week's wages to be able to find out what's going on there. But we're going to land... There's the colonists as well, so I can now increase the population. There we go. Excellent. So now we have 65 out of 75, and I'm going to be doing a little bit more on that off screen. I'm going to hopefully get the capacity to 100, and then I just have to do the grinding work of getting the colonists from Zendar to Diggory, and hopefully we'll be able to start producing dyes then. 
So, yeah, that's the main reason why most of these episodes are pretty short, because there's just so much to do off-screen for me to get any kind of progress on screen, and I'm sure you guys don't want to see me going from Diggory to Zendar, Diggory to Zendar, over and over and over, do you? No, I'm pretty sure you don't, but anyway... That will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and your support on this series. It really is very much appreciated. And I will see you next time.